everyone all right so I am ridiculously happy and giddy and so grateful to finally be feeling better after a past rough couple of days I was in so much pain not just from my bone marrow biopsy but just my joints in general for my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome were hurting me so much I could barely move I was weak and dizzy and stuck to my walker and look no walker this morning. I am doing so much better. I'm so thankful. I mean, I did wake up and have issues with my asthma again. I did wake up and have to go puke in the bathroom due to my gastroparesis, but the pain is lessening, the dizziness is lessening, the weakness is lessening, so I will take it. We're not going to win every battle, but I'm going to celebrate the ones that I do win. So I'm up early this morning because I have an early occupational therapy session for my autism and sensory processing disorder, and I'm not in a hurry, but I wouldn't have time to prep the fruits and vegetables and get Harlow's raw meal together this morning. So I set it up last night and it's just sitting here ready in the fridge. All I have to do is place it on the floor. Sorry if the camera's shaky, I did my breathing treatment. So if you wanna learn more about what's in Harlow's raw meal, watch yesterday's vlog. I'm doing a little prep in yesterday's vlog and I talk more about it. So now I'm gonna feed my pup. It's like a gourmet doggy salad. Sit. Okay. Won't make you do too many tricks this morning because we gotta go. Made a quick stop at the neighborhood dog park to let her burn some energy before OT. At OT, we really work on social skills that I kind of have issues with because of my autism. We work on noticing a lot of strengths that I get from my autism and we work on coping skills for my sensory processing disorder. If you want to learn more about my autism, the things that I need a little help with because of it and my strengths and my SPD, there's a link in the description of this video to a video called All About My Autism and I go into detail about it there. April is Autism Awareness Month so it would be awesome if y'all could learn more about it. I'm doing my best to spread awareness about autism because a lot of people look at me and they're like, you don't look autistic. Well, just so you know, autism doesn't have a look. <laughs> it's uh, based on a series of like social aspects mainly. There's no specific look for autism and it's a spectrum disorder and it affects everyone a very like wide variety of ways. So I'm gonna let Harlow play a little bit more and then we're gonna head to OT. Ready for OT? Okay, let's go, let's go. Okay, off to OT now. I haven't been there in a few weeks because I was in Orlando for two weeks and then I was supposed to go last Monday but I had just gotten out of the hospital and I felt terrible so I canceled my appointment. Now, this is the first time I will be going with Harlow without her treat pouch and there are a ton of kids there running and screaming and playing because they also treat children there and Harlow's one of her biggest distractions is kids and so she's always done really well at ignoring them there but I've had my treat pouch and when you like ditch the treat pouch it's kind of a big deal in your service dog training journey at least it is for me so I'm really interested to see how Harlow does at ignoring the children there when uh, should we go without the treat pouch for the first time because she loves kids and I think she's gonna do well I'm really excited to see how she does and fingers crossed I'm also excited to go back to OT because I haven't been in a while I love my occupational therapist so here we go OT went well. We focused on one of the main obstacles that my autism poses on me and that's often that I'm too blunt. I have a difficult time knowing how my words are going to emotionally affect other people and when I offend other people or make other people upset I can't tell because I have a really difficult time picking up on the emotions of other people. So we had a worksheet and there was a list of phrases and then I'd sort them out into things that I would think or things that I would say. So. I'm so bored. Apparently that's really blunt and that would go in the things you would think instead of things you would say. I don't like your shirt. I thought that was something you could say but apparently that might offend somebody. So we talked about why certain phrases could offend people and why it would be something you think rather than you'd say. And so I found this session really helpful. Again, I love my OT and something really interesting to you new viewers who may not know, before I even knew about my autism and before I even started going to occupational therapy, the career that I'm working towards is a career in occupational therapy or if my health doesn't get better, I'm gonna be an occupational therapy assistant. So I did have to drop out of college this semester. I had to medically withdraw due to my health, but I'm determined to continue college hopefully in the fall and go towards my goal of becoming an occupational therapist. Oh, and this silly pup did great at OT. Even without treats, she ignored all the little kids and did really well and was so well behaved. Now she's being a silly pup. <laughs> 
So I'm watching the series finale of Lost. It's getting really good. And then I got a knock on the door. It was my home health delivery. So I've got my infusion bags in the fridge here to keep them sterile. Got my infusion day tomorrow. And after I finish the Lost episode, I'm going to work on my chronic illness video and my port video and my pots infusion video. The reason I haven't uploaded them yet is because all three are tied in together and I can't finish my chronic illness video yet because I don't know enough about my angioedema and my immunodeficiency to make those sections yet. But on Thursday, I have a telephone appointment with my geneticist who is treating those conditions and found those conditions and I'm going to ask him all the questions I have so I can finish the chronic illness video. I have a big list of questions for him about this. like. So the angioedema, those are the reactions that I have that require IV Benadryl and that put me in the hospital for so often and whatnot. So I have questions like, why did I suddenly start having these issues in December of 2016? Is it called an angioedema attack or a reaction or anaphylaxis or what? Can allergies trigger these angioedema things? And so if y'all have any questions about these reactions or my immunodeficiency, angioedema stuff, let me know because I don't want to miss any important questions. And even though I have a big list of questions, maybe I'm forgetting something to ask him and y'all might have a good question that I haven't thought to ask the doctor yet. So if you have any questions about those conditions, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to ask my doctor and include it in my chronic illness video. And so I'm excited to talk to him on Thursday so I can get more info. I have so much to ask him. And that's it, I'm gonna finish Lost, work on my videos, and then I'm gonna rest a little bit, and by then Judge should be home because we've got some errands to run. Well, I took a nap and woke up with a pretty bad headache that I just knew was gonna turn into a migraine if I didn't do anything about it. So I took some abortive medication and as I was upstairs in my medicine cabinet, I realized I didn't change my port needle this morning. I need to change the needle once a week, and I usually do it Mondays. So I'm going to wait for the meds to kick in, hopefully wait for the headache to dissipate a little bit. Then I'm going to get on to changing my port needle. Jack has a uh, headache at the moment right now, and we were supposed to go to Sam's Club, but because she's feeling pretty under the weather right now, we're not going to go. Uh, instead, I'm going to the gun store to go shopping for guns, window shopping for guns. Because you always need to do that as a man, I feel. And then uh, I'm going to stop at El Publix for some sustenance. And then Walgreens for her meds. Well, that was uneventful. It's kind of kind of hard, boring if you don't have a dog or a disabled person following you around everywhere. So. That was Publix. And now we're off to Wally Greens. And then home. Hopefully Jack's feeling better. All right, so while I have the camera for a little bit, I can go over some questions that were floated past us, floated past me. Um, one of them, which was pretty interesting, is like, do I ever get mad at Jack for not being able to do the stuff that I want to do? And the answer to that is no because she can't control what she can and can't do. That's like her body's just saying, oh, you, you wanna climb stairs today? Well, F you, you're not gonna do that. Her body says, you wanna go to the beach today and hang out in the sun? Pfft, screw you, we're not gonna do that. So yeah, her body can be a little bit of a jerk sometimes. Uh, I had to clean up my language there for a second. I was gonna say something much worse. But uh, yeah, her body can be a bit of a jerk. And um, that I can't get mad at her for that. Why? Why would you get mad at something for something you can't control? So what if we can't go to the beach for a day? Or so what if we can't go do outdoor stuff? We can go find indoor stuff. And I'm in the army, and I'm a cop, so I spend like 90% of my time outside. Uh, well, someone commented a while back ago that Jack is holding me back, and I feel like I'm being held back by her. No, she's not. She's definitely not holding me back at all. Um, I, I've always wanted to serve my country and I get to serve it in two different ways. Two different ways that I never thought I was gonna be able to, I could never think of. I never thought I was gonna be a cop. When I grew up, I never thought I was gonna be a cop. Why? Because when we played cops and robbers, I always wanted to be the robber. And I spoke to people like about service and they're like, oh, you should think about being a cop. And I'm like, oh, well, that's different. I should definitely think about being a cop. So I did. And then I became a cop. And I was like, oh man, now I get to serve my state, my country, and my local community. Like, that's pretty cool. 
I'm serving everybody. I'm like a little server. <laughs> See what I did there? But yeah, anyway, Jack doesn't hold me back at all. In fact, she encourages me to do everything. Everything. She's like, oh, you want to go for military training? <laughs> go for it. You want to go for another deployment? Give us some time. But yeah, you're definitely going back overseas. And like, police career? She's like, oh, you're going to be working 12-hour shifts, but you're going to have some days off? It's like, you're going to get bored out of your mind with your days off. She's right. Two days off is all you need for a work week. You don't need any more. So, yeah, Jack has never held me back any way, shape, or form at all. Excited little Harlow. And looks like someone did a port change and took a nap. After two trips to the store, one that you guys were there for and one that you guys were not, we were finally able to get all the correct ingredients to finish dinner. How's it look? So creamy chicken and shrimp pasta. I still have a terrible headache. That's good, because I thought for a second we were getting this little salad over here. That's Harlow's Gourmet Dog Salad. Yeah, I'm sorry you don't feel well. It's all right. I managed to cook dinner, and we did have to go to Sam's Club, but I don't feel well enough to go out. you got to be flexible with chronic illness. Sometimes you make plans, and your body just says, nope. And sometimes you're at Harlow. Well, we set the table, but... You, uh, I set the table. Sorry, Judd set the table. That's right. Get but I'm not part. feeling well enough to eat. Judd said since I'm not feeling well, we can just lay on the couch while he eats. How is it? Tastes like pretty good food to me. I'm glad. Maybe... weird little fish things in it, though. It's shrimp. Weird fish things. Maybe I'll feel better a little later, but sometimes chronic illnesses just sneak up on you when you're taking a nap and you wake up with a killer headache and you can't do the plans you had for the day, but just gotta do what my body needs and that's rest and maybe tomorrow we can tackle the plans we had. Just gotta be flexible with chronic illness and that's about it for today. Obviously I'm not doing anything else for the night. And that's it. Thank you for joining us on our adventure.